210 NHL hopefuls, June 30th, 2013, would bring a seminal moment. It was the day when their professional fate would be determined as one by one NHL teams would select them in the draft at the Prudential Center in New Jersey. For six of those players, their careers would begin with the Philadelphia Flyers. But which six would wear the orange and black? That was determined by many hours spent by scouts scouring the globe, followed by organizational meetings and culminating in draft weekend. This is that story. This is the Flyers' flight plan. Friday, two days before the draft, the Flyers scouting staff gathers at a local hotel for their last meeting. The goal? Get their draft list finalized and determine who will be the future of the franchise. We, you know, it's a work in progress. We had mid-season meetings in January, um, and then we had our final meetings a couple weeks ago. And this meeting leading up to the draft we have every year just to make sure we have the list in order, if there's any questions or concerns amongst our guys after they've digested what we've done a couple weeks ago till now, because we still got time, you know, we don't, we don't make a pick until Sunday whenever our pick is, so we have time to adjust, and if there's any adjustments to be made to the board that we've developed through the year, now is the time to do it, so we try to get, try to get it right. And sometimes it takes, you got to go over and over and over and have conversations about, same conversations over and over again to get it right. You guys, everybody's got to look at the board here and, and this is our final cut kind of. We got to just decide that, is there any names up there that are out of order, out of whack? And I, we got to start, let's start from here. I mean, I start, go, work our way down here. What, what? What name's out of whack? Is there anybody out of whack there? These three guys, do we have them in the right order? Jump in here, man. This is a this come to Jesus meeting. We gotta f***ing get this right. Like, I don't want, you know, I don't want to hear about ne a year from now. Yeah. We should put it in the order where we're not going to hope the guy falls to us, that we just get him. Right? right. No, well, if Nurse is there at 11, then we want him. That's, That's what I'm key. saying. So if we don't want to exactly. do that, then we just move 8 to 6. Well, we gotta move this guy. Eight to six. We, we want him ahead of him. Well, that's the point. Now, if he falls, I think I think falls, like we. Then you go. Are we happy with that, or do we want? Are we still sitting there going? We want eight. I think like we discussed in that scenario there, Sarge, just because it's a forward defense, and we might have to take a little direction from Homer, because I, I know the last time that we talked about that specific scenario, Todd and I had Monahan ahead. I don't well, think well, Patty did. I, I hear what you're saying, but no. It's up to us to get them in order, and then if we want to change it at the table, then we'll, we can, we'll do that. But right now, like, let's just say Nurse and, Mon and Morin. I don't think that they're in the right order. I don't either. Basically, we're trying to build a list of players that we have in order of our evaluations. In the Western Hockey League, for example, the league that I cover, I will see most of my players on that list between 8 to 13 times. You know, a crossover scout from Quebec or Ontario will come in generally at the first part of the season and the second part of the season and if we're lucky in the playoffs and grab three to five viewings and we try to incorporate all those viewings into our overall evaluation. Moore has got some obviously we're waiting. He's coming. It's all great right now. I really like him. I just he's got to get going. He still has a long way to go. And the other guys could probably close. Well, why do we, why do we have why do we have Morin over Mueller then? Well, I don't. But well, uh, in saying you're, you're we're using that under that circum well, those circumstances. I why do we like have? The, I still like the the hardness, uh, his natural ability to be hard and aggressive. I agree with that. I like that. That's what I like about Morin the most. And I well, like that Nurse does the same thing. I just agree. I think Morin knows his game better than Nurse does. Well, right now maybe he does. I think Morin knows what he's going to be. I don't know whether Nurse is going to get it. He might. But this goes round and round, and I get yeah, it. I'm really, happy well, to, uh, I'm really happy to get more. Uh, I, I understand it goes round and round, but we uh, got to get the uh, right by, by Sunday. Are, like, our consensus is I that, get it. Our consensus is that what? We like more. So let's, I'm happy with that. So we got we got Morin ahead. We got Monahan ahead of Morin. Why? 
I like the overall package better, and I think uh, he's a little closer to, to being what he is, not necessarily that so down the road that matters, I but I, that. I like his overall package. I think he's a good two-way so player. In saying that, why did we got Morin over Mueller because of, because of why? Yeah, because we voted and we thought Morin had a better upside to his game. I agree. If he hits, you know, you're, you're reaching, but he's a 6'8 guy. Where do you find these guys? You know, there's some reach in him, but he's going to have value whether we like him or we don't. And I guess the other Mueller thing. will have value. Yep. Mueller will have value, maybe not as much as those other two. I guess in, in the same regard, Sarge, I'm, I'm not going to argue to the nth degree Mueller over Moran. Like, I'm okay with it. I get what we're doing, and I've seen him enough to say that I'm all right with that. I do have Mueller ahead. I think Moran's got more meanness, oh, more accurate yeah. that can give you that strong. That's who we're talking about, is a player and their char characteristics and compared to another player. Our guys have spent countless hours on the road trying to find the best players, and we try to get those players in order. And if it happens to be a defenseman or happens to take forward, I mean, it's just try to get the, the best player. So who's, and who's got the, most, who's got the most upside on the board? Morgan has like your tree. That's me. Who's got the most upside? Morgan. I don't know if he's going to hit it, but he's got the most upside. That's good. I like that. I like that way of going. We have to. That's the only way you're going to get a D man yeah. because they're not perfect. They're not perfect down yeah. right So if we do this, we're okay with that. Is that all, is that just way out of whack? I can look at that. I like that. We got Risto at 11, Nurse at 12, Monahan 13. I think, it, or no, we got. Moran, Mueller, Zadaroff, Nurse, Ristol, Monahan. What number are they? Morrissey. 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 So Moran's six now. Nurse is six. Zadaroff is eight. Nurse is nine. Moran's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so eleven, again at 11 at the twelve. So we're, we're happy with that. The scouting staff agreed on the changes, but the final litmus test would come when general manager Paul Holmgren joined the meeting. What did you, what did you do there, sir? Did you move Moran? I got Barkoff, Moran, Mueller, Zadaroff, Nurse, Riston. Monahan's behind these, all these big defensemen. And then you got Morrissey after Monahan. You guys are fading under the pressure. The I think so. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of Flight Plan, the Flyer staff heads to Newark for the draft. Paul Holmgren works the room to see if there is a trade that makes sense before ultimately drafting the player the team has liked all along. And Samuel Moran spends his first hours as a member of the Flyers organization.